workshop covering many sessions. Honestly, I do not know how many as of now, but inshallah, we will try to wrap it up uh, within a couple of weeks, hopefully. Type. Uh, so we said the agenda for this uh, workshop is uh, as as follows. Uh, we already talked about the Tawheed aspect and we said Tawheed is important because it has a direct bearing on, on understanding, first of all, the nature of the jinn and how they are created and what they can do, what they cannot do. Yeah, all by the will of Allah, of course. And then also it has a bearing on uh, the relationship with uh, mankind, as we will see in the last half of the workshop. So we discussed already Tawheed, Rububiyya, uh, Uluhiyya, Asma, Sifat, and why uh, a Muslim for a Muslim, this is paramount. This is the most important um, aspect of his life. If there is no, no Tawheed in a, in a Muslim's life, he has nothing. He has nothing absolutely. Even if he prays uh, all his life, he fasts, uh, as much as possible, uh, he he does multiple Hajj, Umrah. Uh, it, this is of no use. If there is no Tawheed, all this is of no use. And we said Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, has mentioned in the Quran, meaning of which is that He will forgive any sin which He wishes, uh, any sin, any sin, zina, gambling, riba, whatever, as if if He wishes. This is up to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He is the Maliki Yomiddin, yeah, except shirk. Shirk with Allah. So this is something which is unforgivable, right? So this is the, the importance of Tawheed. And then we talked about um, the definition of jinn, what it means, uh, some attributes. Um, also last weekend, also we did a quick recap of it last, sorry, yesterday. And currently we're in the life of the jinn. So we talked about uh, the lifespan. Uh, and we said, uh, generally speaking, they outlive the human beings. The jinn, they outlive the human beings. As for their chief uh, bad jinn, who is Iblis, and we said jinn can be good and bad. They can, You can have good jinn and you can have bad jinn. Just like you have good human beings who are Muslims like you, inshallah, and then you have also bad human beings who are the kuffar, the munafikun, and so on. Likewise, even in the jinn, uh, in this creation, you have uh, both of them, which means what they have accountability, and it also means they can choose between right and wrong. Allah has given them these faculties to decide what to do, what not to do, what to follow, whom to follow, what to reject. Yeah, they have this as human beings do. We talked all about this yesterday as well uh, the ayat from Surah Jinn and so on, yeah, and the hadith as well supporting that, right? Um, again, if you have missed any of the sessions, you can always go back to the Vimeo channel and, and, and refer that, inshallah. Uh, so we talked about the lifespan and we said the chief bad jinn Iblis, he is going to live right up to the day of judgment. Yani. This is a, 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 a ex exception given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Araf as mentioned. Um, but otherwise generally all of them die. With Allah says in Surah Rahman, Kulluman alayha fan. Though they live beyond the lifespan of uh, the human beings, but they all inshallah die. Sorry about that. Time. Okay, I hope it's visible and audible. Just give me a moment here. Type. And uh, we also looked at the aspect of the food and drink and dwelling. Because remember, we said they are like like us. They are like the humans. So they have families, they have societies, they have uh, family hierarchies, grandfather, grandmother, children, and all these kind of things. Uh, so likewise, they also like human beings, they have, they eat and they drink and they stay in places, especially the type of jinn, which is the third type, which we said they stay in the, on, the, uh, on the earth in a, in a place and they wander around on earth, yeah? And the first two types being different, they fly in the air and they live as dogs and snakes. So we talked about this yesterday. We said the bones and the dung are the bones are basically meat for them, and the droppings are the dung. Dung is uh, food for their animals, which means they also have animals. And we said shaitan himself and the shayateen they eat and drink with their left hand, and uh, that is why Muslims should not do this. Uh, they should attempt to eat with and drink with their right hand, um, and then. 
regarding where they stay, usually the shayateen, we said in mostly dirty places like the bathrooms and so on, um, camel spens, uh, abandoned houses, open areas, all these are, are uh, habitats for uh, the jinn. And uh, we also did, said that they like to hang out in, in the souk and the marketplaces, the shayateen especially. And when we say, when we mention shayateen, we're talking about the, the bad or the devil jinn, right? Uh, the good jinn is, is a different, uh, different uh, category. But the shayateen, when we say, we're talking about uh, the bad and the evil jinn. When we say ash shaitan, we're referring to their leader, Iblis. Faraklafikum. So we said uh, people should avoid hanging out in marketplaces and so on. So unless it's absolutely necessary, you need to buy something, go do your shopping, come back and avoid the opening times and the closing times. As per the hadith of Rasulullah, we discussed this also yesterday. And also, especially regarding the children, especially our children, we need to bring them in when, when the sun sets, because Rasulullah said this is the time when uh, the shayateen spread out. So bring your children in. So this is a very important point. Many Muslims do not have knowledge of this. So uh, we should keep this in mind. Also, all this was discussed yesterday, alhamdulillah. We stopped here. So we'll just do a quick recap of this slide. Um, so since so they, they, they eat and drink, and we said they have families. If they have families, which means they should uh, be able to get married and they should be able to also to uh, procreate or reproduce, right? And uh, in Surah Rahman, Allah says, meaning of which is, uh, regarding the Hural Ain, uh, the, the damsels of, of paradise, uh, which each of uh, uh, the Muslims will have who enter paradise. Yeah, he says uh, regarding them that no man or jinni has had tamth with them. And the scholars of tafsir, they said tamth means uh, actually uh, sexual intercourse. It also had other meanings, but in this regard, it means uh, um, approaching or sexual intercourse. And uh, we said, if you do not say the dua, which we mentioned yesterday before approaching the spouse, uh, shaitan is the third uh, with the husband and the wife in, in the bed. Barak lafikum, wada taib. Also from this ayat in Surah Kahf, uh, Allah, Allah mentions durriyati, so offspring, yeah? So we, we know that they, they marry, they have reproduction, they also have offspring, they have children. And this is how they expand their race, like the human beings. And uh, there are also been cases uh, from the scholars and books of the scholars about the jinn, right? Uh, about uh, them marrying the human beings. Some scholars say, oh, no, this is not possible, right? And we said Suyuti says it's possible, Rahimullah. Uh, but some other scholars say, no, this is not possible uh, for, a, for a jinni to get married to a human being. Of course, when, you, when, we, when we say this, we mean uh, the jinni in the form of a man, right? Obviously, because like we said, the humans cannot see uh, the jinn in their natural form, in their native form, rather. Um, and finally, it's, it's also possible, and we have seen many cases of this, uh, both in, in present day, also in the past, that uh, the jinn can fall in love with human beings. And most of the, in the Rukia sessions, when the Raki uh, discusses this and he asks them why you did this, what was the reason, yeah? So mostly, mostly, nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times, uh, the jinni responds by saying that he fell, he or she, so it could be a male jinni falling in love with a, a female human being, a female Muslima, or it could be vice versa, it could be a female jinni falling in love with uh, a male uh, Muslim, right? So uh, mostly they would say, you know, uh, because we, for example, we saw this person uh, wearing nothing in the house and walking around or wearing just shorts and joggers and I fell in love with him, right? For example, or um, uh, the sisters, when they go out without hijab, when they don't wear their proper Sharia hijab, yeah, uh, a jinni may fall in love, uh, a male jinni may fall in love with this sister, with this Muslim. See, this is why, brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in place certain commandments, yeah, this is for the betterment, this is for the benefit of you and me. It is not something just, uh, you know, just because it is, has to be there, we have, have, we have to have a sharia, we have to have some do and do's and don'ts, it's there. No, each and every command, each and every prohibition is for your benefit and my benefit. In dunya and akhira. 
So the sisters who go out, and they, maybe some sisters will claim, oh, nothing happened to me. I've been going out without hijab for the past 30 years. Alhamdulillah, this is good. Alhamdulillah, nothing happened to you. But you're, you're A, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, and B, anything can still happen. This because nothing happened for 30 years doesn't mean that, you know, the next 30 years is going, is going to be a bed of roses, right? So uh, this is something, Yani, uh, which is which is uh, mostly the people come to know about this, and um, and most of the cases. Well, I remember one once uh, Rake was mentioning that uh, and this happened in India that uh, the jinn when they when they spread out in the evening and in the night time, they came to a particular house, rather one jinni, uh, she, uh, she she he sorry he he came to a particular house, and he saw and the balcony was open. The, the the window of the balcony was open and there was the sister the Muslim inside her hair open yeah and she was standing outside the balcony looking around in the street and everything yeah uh, taking some fresh air whatever I don't know but she was in the balcony uh, with her hair exposed so this jinni said I fell in love with her I saw her and I fell in love with her and I possessed her he he, he possessed her We'll talk more about this, inshallah, when we discuss position. But quickly, the point I, I want to make is basically that it is possible uh, there have been cases of uh, love between um, the jinn uh, or the jinn falling in love with human beings. Uh, so this was a brief on, 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 on their lifestyle, what they eat and drink and their society. Uh, what about their abilities? So we want to move on now to their abilities and after that, their weaknesses. So what are they capable of? Very, very important for a Muslim to understand and know. Again, because we said many uh, Muslims have a general fear of the jinn. They have a general fear of this word. And I know some people who don't attend this workshop because they said, I'm scared. So there's nothing to be scared about, really. I mean, the, the, the jinn is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And uh, whatever happens, happens by the will of Allah. And if we follow the commandments of Allah, Nothing can happen, inshallah. So it's very important to understand what the jinn can do and what they cannot do, right? So we do also do not want to exaggerate and, and give them uh, more credit than actually due. Okay? So let's look at some of their abilities. First of all, as we discussed earlier briefly, as Allah says in the Quran, meaning of which is that they can see us from where we cannot see them. So they can see us from where we cannot see them. <clears throat> Excuse me. In terms of the shayateen, it seems it seems like like, like you know we have we have them uh, we are at a disadvantage because it, it seems that they can see us and we, we we cannot see them, so it looks like we are we are at a disadvantage, but really not. <clears throat> we have the advantage of having Allah with us. We have the advantage of having the Quran and the Sunnah with us. Yeah, we have the advantage of having the Hadith and the commands of Rasulullah and how to protect ourselves. So this the jinn don't have. The jinn don't have this, right? And whenever the, 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 the word of Allah mentioned or, or the adhan and the ikama, they run away. They run away. So, uh, so generally, not, nothing to worry about, even though this is the case. Yeah, this is how Allah has made them. They are very strong. They are very strong and they can move very quickly from one place to another. They are very strong and they can move quickly from one place to another. Uh, we have the story in Surat uh, Al-Namal uh, about um, Sulaiman alayhi salam, right? When Sulaiman alayhi salam, the earlier prophet, he was in the Baitul Maqdis in, in Jerusalem, yeah? And uh, he was looking for this, if you remember the story, the hoopy, hoopy bird, yeah? Which was missing from his army. Uh, and Sulaiman alayhi salam had this unique uh, army of birds and animals and the wind was at his command and so on. But they will love Allah. So... Uh, this bird came and eventually told him that she was in Yemen in, with the Queen of Sheba and these people were worshipping the sun. So, uh, and then of course, it's a long story, but uh, Sulaiman al sent a message, she sent back a message and eventually she was coming to meet him and Sulaiman al wanted, uh, he asked the, his army, he asked, who can bring me her throne before she reaches here? Because her throne was supposed to be something very special, very special. And, uh, and the, the bird said, I have not seen anything like it before the throne of the Queen of Sheba. Taib, uh, so as the ayat says, an Ifrit from the jinn. If you remember Ifrit, we talked about some Arabic names for the jinn in the first session. Yeah, Ifrit is one of them. Afrit, Ifrit, yeah. So an Ifrit from the jinn said, I will bring it to you 
before you rise from your place and verily i am indeed strong and trustworthy for such work see the jinn used to work for suleiman alayhi salam and this was one of the uh, miracles of allah on the hands of suleiman alayhi salam and this ifri this jinni who was in the army of suleiman alayhi salam is telling him i will bring the throne from yemen yemen you know where is yemen and where is battle magdis it's a long distance even by flight today it will take i don't know maybe at least two and a half hours two hours minimum two hours if not more allah alam two hours by air travel at least and this ifrit is telling i will go to yemen pick up the throne it's a huge throne it's it's one of one of one of its kind very very heavy as per the reports from the bird a huge throne so this ifrit is alone is willing to go alone all the way to yemen pick up this huge throne and bring it back so come back with the throne carrying the throne this huge heavy throne to suleiman al islam before suleiman al islam can rise from his seat allahu akbar can you imagine this this shows you how strong they are because this throne was heavy and he has to fly with the throne and to how fast they are they are very fast they can move very fast from point a to point b and of course uh, after this the ayat continues of course as we know somebody else whom allah had given knowledge of the scriptures he uh, said i will bring you the throne within the blink of an eye and he is the one who did it finally but anyway the point for the, for us scope of the discussion is is that the jinn are very strong and they can move very fast right um, also in surah jinn allah says a uh, meaning of which is that uh, regarding the jinn they said that we probed the heaven and found it filled with stern guards and projectiles so uh, and also from the the uh, tafsir of ibn kathir which we mentioned when we talked about the creation of the jinn uh, that the jinn you know were taken up beyond the space so this creation has gone into the space gone into the lowest heavens or the or the boundaries of the lowest heavens much before even man could contemplate doing so barakallahu feekum and that uh, number 9 says meaning of which is that we used to take up positions to listen in but whoever listens now finds a projectile or shooting star waiting for him so we discussed this also uh, in the last uh, session so alhamdulillah so this shooting star is basically uh, an angel uh, driving away uh, one from the from the jinni tay barakallahu feekum okay um continuing with the abilities they have a good knowledge of building you know structures uh, civil engineering you can call it whatever yeah handicrafts as well how do we know this <coughs> excuse me surah tasaba uh, daud alayhi salam the father of sulaiman alayhi salam yeah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah tasaba ayat number 13 that uh, they worked for him for whom for daud alayhi salam so the jinn would also work for him what he desired high rooms making huge rooms vast uh, huge rooms images basins as large as reservoirs yeah uh, cauldrons huge cauldrons uh, and then I work you a family of dawood with thanks but few of my slaves are thankful or grateful so uh, we know that they are strong we know that they are fast we know that they can uh, also uh, do a lot of building uh constructions and so on and so forth also they can change shape yes the jinn can take different forms from their native form and we have many many ayat many cases about this both in from the sharia as well as from the reports of the various raqi whom we trusted inshallah so um ability to change shape right and uh, uh, one of the dalils from surah anfal talking about the battle of badr and uh, we said surah anfal is the surah which talks about the battle of badr uh, so it's a very interesting surah to go back and read if you're studying sira uh, this is this is important inshallah with the, with the tafsir yani so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, and remember when shaitan made their deeds seem fair to them so whom regarding quraish so shaitan made the evil deeds of quraish seem fair to them seem okay for them even though they were evil he said it's okay how did what did he say no one of mankind can overcome you this day and verily i am your neighbor so he's he's encouraging them he's motivating them he's telling them don't worry nobody can defeat you today 
and I'm your neighbor. How is this, how is this conversation happening? In this case, in this, uh, on the day of Battle of Badr, uh, Iblis, Ash-Shaitan, yeah, he came to uh, the Quraysh in the form of, uh, of a chief of a tribe uh, who was Suraka bin Malik. So the Quraysh, they knew Suraka bin Malik, they knew who he was, they have met him many times, and uh, he came in the form of this man. So uh, it was actually Iblis in the form of Suraka bin Malik. So when he came and spoke to the Quraysh, they, they recognized him, then they listened to what he said. And in fact, like we said earlier, I think this, the Quraysh, they were worried about the tribe of Suraka bin Malik because uh, they didn't have very good uh, relations with them. And they were worried that he may attack from the rear side when they're fighting the Muslims. Uh, they were worried that Suraka bin Malik and his people will attack from the rear, from the back. So Iblis came to them in the form of Suraka bin Malik and said, don't worry, I will not, uh, we will not attack you, you know, and go and fight and nobody can overcome you this day. And of course, when the, when the two forces uh, came in sight of each other, uh, Suraka, Suraka ran away. Allah says he ran away and said, Verily, I have nothing to do with you. Verily, I see what you see not. Verily, I fear for Allah is severe in punishment. Allah Akbar. And amazing. Ajib. And wallahi. This ayat is amazing. Amazing ayat in the Quran. Why? The second half of the ayat. Iblis is there. And I want you to, as, as I'm speaking, I want you to relate this to our situation, your situation, my situation, our situation today in, 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 in uh, whatever you are doing and all this, right? Uh, Iblis first tells you, don't worry, this is what you're doing is correct. So when we sin, when we fall into sin, Iblis uh, or Shaitan whispers to us saying, this is, this is the right thing. This bidda is the right thing. This riba is the right thing. Uh, you know, this, this, everybody's doing it. Uh, if it was haram, you know, the Muslim countries will not have uh, riba banks. So all this waswasa is coming from Iblis and his troops as the first half of the ayah. See, this is why the Quran has to be understood, not just read, because there are so many lessons. I'm going to give you three lessons at least from this one ayat. And that's me. I'm, I'm, no, I'm a nobody. So if you go and look at the tafasir of the scholars, you will find volumes of knowledge from this one single ayat. So the first part, clear, he's telling the Quraysh, go ahead, yani, I'm with you, yalla. Go and kill them, nobody will be defeated today. Same thing he comes and tells all of you and me. Go ahead, do this, it's fine, do this, bidda, it's okay, celebrate maulid, eat riba, gamble, uh, take interest for the loan and for your education and for the marriage, no problem, don't worry. Otherwise, how else will you get married? This is what he puts, how, how else, what else can you do? Where else will you work? All this is from Iblis. And shaitan type. Wabad, when the two forces come inside, what happened? He ran away. He ran away. On the Day of Judgment, the same thing will happen. And we talked about this when we talked about the series on Akhirah. The same thing will happen. When, when, when the Muslims try to blame shaitan, uh, shaitan and Iblis, he will say, I have nothing to do with you. The same thing. I have nothing to do with you. And he will say, Wallahi, it is in the Quran. It is in the Quran. In this ayat and also other ayat talking about the day of judgment. Iblis, Iblis will say, I fear Allah. Can you imagine that? This guy who's deviating us, who's whispering to us, who's teaching us to do all kinds of stuff, he's going to say, I fear Allah. So what about you and me? What should we, what should we be saying? For verily, Allah is severe in punishment. Shadidul. See, many times the, the brothers, you know, they say, Oh, Allah, Ghafurur Rahim, Allah, Ghafurur Rahim, He will forgive. Ya khi, what can I do, Yani? I am in this situation, it's difficult. Allah, Ghafurur Rahim, Allah, Ghafurur Rahim. Make, 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 to, make dua for me. Haven't you heard this before? Type, what about the full ayat? Allah, Ghafurur Rahim, wa Shadidul Iqab. Ah. Allah is the most forgiving and merciful and he's also the most severe in punishment. Nobody can punish as Allah punishes. Nobody. Not your school principal, not your college principal, not your father, not your boss, not the kuffar soldiers, not the kuffar police. Nobody can punish as Allah punishes. Allah is shadidul liqab. And this comes so many places in the Quran. But then we as Muslims, we tend to oversee this, right? And we said, no, 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 Allah Ghafurur Rahim, alhamdulillah. So continue doing sin, subhanallah. 
type. So anyway, this is this is one of their abilities that they can uh, take the form of humans. <clears throat> also, another example, another dalil for this. I think we talked about it earlier as well. When uh, before the Hijra, just before the Hijra of Rasulullah from uh, Makkah to Medina, uh, the, the 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 Quraysh they met. And, and they were discussing what to do with, with Rasulullah. And he came again in the form of a human being, Iblis, the chief uh, evildoer. And he put in this idea to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then all the chiefs, Abu Jahl and everybody, they liked the idea and they, they seconded it. But he was there and he was the one who put this idea on the floor to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see how much he hates us? How much he hates our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And yet we follow him, SubhanAllah. Uh, we talked about this when we said, mentioned about the second type of jinn. There is a hadith of Abu Sayyid al Khudri radiallahu an that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, the meaning of which is that in Medina there are some of the jinn who have become Muslim. So Rasulullah said, in Medina there are some of the jinn who have become Muslim. Whoever sees any sign of these inhabitants, let him warn him for three days. Then if he appears after that, let him kill him. For he is a devil. So Rasulullah is saying, because they were talking, they were in Medina, so he's referring to Medina, and this could apply anywhere else as well. That in Medina, some of the jinn have become Muslim, right? And they can come in the form of a snake. If you remember, we talked about these three types of jinn earlier, and these three types are not necessarily shayateen, they are generally jinn. So it can be good jinn or bad jinn. So both good jinn and bad jinn can come in the form of snakes. This is the second type, right? So Rasulullah said, some of them have become Muslim. They have become good, inshallah. If you see any sign of these inhabitants, so he's referring to say snake. If you see a snake in your house, let him warn the snake for three days. So warn it. Ask him to fear Allah and leave the house. If he st still appears, if he still sees the snake on the fourth day after that, Rasulullah said, kill it. because uh, Kill him for he is a devil. So now you kill it because he's a shaitan. Because if he's a Muslim snake, he will leave. We believe in this. Alhamdulillah. Rasulullah said this, Sahih Hadith, we believe in this. If it is a Muslim snake, he will leave within the three days time period. If he still come, keeps coming, khalas, kill it because he is a shaitan. And also black dog, we mentioned this. Uh, there are some scholars who say this hadith is weak. Uh, Allahu alam. But um, we can take it. Some scholars say no, any, every black dog is a, a shaitan and has to be killed. There's a hadith, but some scholars grade this hadith as, as weak. Allah uh, Finally, uh, also the ability that they flow uh, through our veins. Uh, Allah Rasulullah Sallam says in the hadith in Bukhari, number 717. And this happened uh, when Rasulullah was in Itikaf. You know Itikaf? Itikaf is basically um, spending. Uh, in seclusion, uh, a Muslim spending in seclusion his time in Ramadan in a masjid, usually the last 10 nights. So he or she will, will spend this time in the masjid, uh, remembering Allah, praying, salawat, uh, uh, reciting the Quran, learning the Quran, hifz, uh, dhikr Allah, without any worldly matters coming into play. So Rasulullah, would, this was his practice, this is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was spending the kaf in, in, in the Masjid Nabawi, and his wife, Umm al Mumin, our mother, uh, Safiya bint Huwai radiallahu anha, she came to visit him. She came to visit him when he was in the kaf. And she discussed some matters, and then when she was leaving, he walked her out. You know, he, he came out to the Masjid to leave her. And this point, uh, the hijab ayat we already revealed. So this was towards the end of the Madinan period. So, so uh, sorry, Safiya, Safiya uh, radiallahu anha, she was in complete. Uh, hijab. So um, there were two Ansari men because this is Madina. The Ansar, Ansar are the helpers, the Aus and the Khazraj, the two Arab tribes. Two of them were passing by, and when they saw Rasulullah with this with the lady, they changed their path. They went away a bit away. He called them back. He called them back. He called them back, and he said, "This is Safiya, my wife." Rasulullah told them. So the Ansari, the two of them said, Ya Billah, Ya Rasulullah, we can never suspect you. But what did Rasulullah say? He said, I know, but shaitan flows through you like the blood, like blood flows through the veins. 
So I didn't want him to put any waswasa in your minds. So Rasulullah want to wanted to clarify the matter before shaitan can put any waswasa in the in the two Ansari's uh, hearts. So he said, this is my wife. I mean, she, she's halal for me. She's my wife. So they said, how's it Rasulullah, this, we can never suspect you. Yani. Of course, they would never suspect him. But Rasulullah is trying to teach us a lesson. Uh, and the fact that shaitan, he flows through our blood. Uh, he flows through us like blood flows through veins. So we should be all the more careful very vigilant and the one thing which which helps us and there are many of course that the, but the foremost thing is the remembrance of allah see the heart brothers uh, when we talked about tawh tawheed we said this right in the first session the heart is like a vessel it's like a cup uh, it takes whatever you put in it you put water the water takes the shape of the cup you put uh, milk whatever sand okay rocks okay so we have to have a pure heart. And this is only through the remembrance of Allah. The same heart cannot have Allah and Shaitan in it. It's impossible. It's impossible. Either Allah resides in it or Shaitan resides in it. And this is possible only with more and more remembrance of Allah. Like Rasulullah said in the hadith, keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. Dhikr Allah. How many of us do this? Subhanallah, he will be Subhanallah, he uh, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, uh, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika, la hul mulk, wa lahu alhamd, wa hu ala kulli shayin kadir, 100 times a day. Uh, how many of us do this? Very simple. Kalimatani, khafifatani, al lisani. Uh, two words, very light on the tongue and very heavy on the scale. Wa habibatani, ar rahmani, and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the hadith. What are the two words? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah alazim. Very light on the tongue, very heavy on the scale on the day of judgment, the mizan, and very beloved to Ar Rahman. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Type. So these were some of their uh, some of the abilities uh, which I thought would be worth discussing, inshallah. We want to now move on to their weaknesses. Yeah, they do have weaknesses. Everybody has weaknesses, they have vulnerabilities. Yeah, type. They have no authority over the righteous slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like yourselves, inshallah. Absolutely no authority. See, when the alarm goes off at 3.30 in the morning on a summer day, right? For what? Fajr. Salatul Fajr. Or you hear the adhan. Salatul Fajr. You get this whispering sometimes. Oh, there's still time, like 20 minutes for ikama. You can catch a quick nap. Or you were late, you were awake all night last, last night, or you slept late. You can sleep a little bit more. Or, you know, worst case, you can, you know, pray before you go to work. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's just a waswasa. It is just a whispering. But then when you get up, Alhamdulillah, one of the knots is untied. It's a whispering. Once you get up, shaitan cannot push you back into the bed. Can you do that? It's impossible. It is impossible. He cannot push you back into the bed. It is we who listen to him and continue to sleep in the bed. So he has no authority over the righteous slaves of Allah. We have an example, classical example from Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu an, the Khalifa of the Muslim, Muslimin, Amir al Muminin. Yeah, Rasulullah said regarding Umar bin Khattab when he was talking about him, he said, Ya Umar, when Shaitan, wallahi, wallahi, and this hadith is sahih, when Shaitan sees you taking a path or taking a road, he takes the other path. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah is saying regarding, regarding Umar bin Khattab, he says, Ya Umar, when shaitan sees you taking a path, he takes another path. Shaitan has given up upon you. Khalas, he knows he cannot do anything to you. He doesn't even bother. He doesn't even attempt. He doesn't even make a, an effort. He just takes another path. He takes another road. Allahu Akbar. What, why was this? Was it because of Umar's size? Because Umar bin Khattab was a huge man. He was a towering figure, a great personality. He was a wrestler. He used to wrestle with Khalid and Walid, radiallahu an, in, in Jahiliya. He was like, you know, the muscle man of today. Huge. 
This is Umar bin Khattab. Just the sight of him would send shivers down the spines. The Kuffar kings, when they heard Umar is coming with his army or preparing his army, khalas, they would do it in their pants. Wallahi. You read the seerah of Umar bin Khattab. It's all there. So was this the reason why shaitan was taking another path? La yaakhi. Because we said, we said the shaitan are very strong. We just said that. They are very strong. This Ifrit could lift a throne from Yemen and fly back to Bayt al -Maqdis. So they are stronger than Umar bin Khattab. What is the reason they are taking another path? Tawheed, Aqeedah, Taqwa. So if you have, inshallah, the right Tawheed, and the right Aqeedah, and Taqwa of Allah, khalas, you, you are in the same category as Umar bin Khattab, Shaitan will not even bother attempting to try to uh, yani, uh, deviate you. He knows he cannot. And Umar bin Khattab was a human being like you and me. So when he can do it, why can't you and I? That's the question. In Surah Isra, Allah says, meaning of which is, uh, and he, when this happens in, 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 uh, in Jannah when Iblis uh, refuses to prostrate, yeah? So Allah says, verily my slaves, the true believers in, in Tawheed, you have no authority over them. Khalas. Allah is telling you this in the Quran. That Iblis will have no authority over the true slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is sufficient as, as, as and Allah says, and all sufficient is your Lord as a guardian. Yani husband Allah wa al wakil. Khalas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our guardian and this is sufficient for us. Once one, the one who believes in this, and lives his life based on this concept, alhamdulillah, he's in the category of Umar bin Khattab. Also in Surah Saba, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, meaning of which is, and he had no authority over them, except that we might test him, who believes in the hereafter from him, who is in doubt about it. And the Lord is a hafiz over everything. So Allah is saying, uh, that Iblis has no authority over his righteous slaves. Except that Allah, but except when Allah wants to test his slaves. And we said this dunya is a test. And all of us, you and we, me, will be tested. Through shaitan, of course. Shaitan is the source of these tests for us. To see and to prove that who really believes in the hereafter and believes in Allah and who has a doubt about it. Because everybody says we are Muslim. Prove it. Allah says, prove it. Everybody says, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. I love Rasulullah, I love Rasulullah. Huh? All of us say this. Is this sufficient to enter Jannah? La yaakhi. Allah wants proof. Dalil, show me, show me. Okay, you love me? Show me. When kuntum tuhibbun allaha, fattabiyuni, yuhibbukum allah, fayakfir lakum dhunubakum, wallahu ghafoorur rahim. If you claim, Allah says in the Quran, many of is, if you claim you love Allah, don't you claim that? Don't I, doesn't, don't, 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 don't I claim that? Yes. Allah says, if you claim you love Allah, فَاتَّبِيُونِ Follow me, follow whom? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah wants proof. Follow. Allah didn't say, sing a nasheed, stick, stick a bumper sticker on your car, I love Muhammad. Huh? No, follow. Follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, they are weak. The shayateen are weak. And we have another uh, story in, in uh, we can mention it inshallah, because this is from Ibn al-Jawzi. Rahimullah. Ibn al-Jawzi is one of the classical scholars of, uh, of Islam. A very great scholar. He wrote in his uh, very nice book, and most of you must have read this book, uh, Talbis Iblis. Uh, it translates to like the, the, the traps of shaitan or, or, the, or the deviations of shaitan, yeah? Talbis Iblis. He refers to a story by Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri is one of the Salaf, uh, Rahimullah. Hassan al-Basri mentions that, uh, that there was a tree being worshipped besides Allah. People were worshipping a tree besides Allah. A man went out to cut this tree from anger for the sake of Allah. So he was very pissed off. He was uh, 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 totally irritated. I'm sorry, totally irritated. He went out to cut this tree because people are worshipping it besides Allah. Shirk, yaqi, shirk. As he was going out with his, with his um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the axe. Yeah, the axe to cut the tree. Uh, Iblis came to him in the form of a man. 
and we said they can take the shape of of men or women for that matter so iblis came to me in the form of a man so he came to the person in the form of a man and he said where are you going so this person was furious this this abid this righteous slave of allah was furious he is he was burning with, with red with anger he said i'm going to cut this tree down they're worshiping this tree besides allah yani what's happening the shirk i'm going to get rid of this from its roots so what did iblis tell him remember he's in the form of a man huh? he told him if you go back i promise you two dinars on your pillow every morning so every morning you will see two dinars uh, like a currency it's it's a large amount two dinars by your pillow so now the man looked at this and he thought about it and said okay he went back he went back the next morning as promised there were two dinars so he 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 was happy the next day again there were two dinars he was happy doing nothing he was just sitting in his house third day there was no money there was no money so he went out again picking up his axe he left again iblis came to him in the form of say, the same man he said where are you going what 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 happened to you he said i'm going to cut this tree down and then shaitan he said and shaitan was able to overpower him at this point and he and he 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 prevent, prevented him from going forward because he said the first time when you were going i didn't have any choice because you had taqwa you had the fear of allah but now you're going out because you're not getting the money and now you you become weak and i'm able to overpower you so again this story gives you that taqwa is the thing which keeps a person strong against the shayatin so initially when he this person went out to cut the tree he, it was for the fear of allah he, he feared allah he wanted this to be done for the sake of allah but now when he was the fourth day when he's going out is because he didn't get those two dinars and he was upset that this guy he promised me dinars every morning he is not coming so now i am going to cut the tree you see the difference now and now he had become weak he had become weak this person had become weak and the shaitan was able to overpower him so shaitan will 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 will, will fear us if we have taqwa and for example in the hadith we know that he cannot open a door on which allah's name has been mentioned so when you close the door and you mention allah's name for example in the night uh, when you're going to bed or whatever when you're locking up the house you say bismillah and you close the door khalas he cannot open this door so imagine what about the heart which has the remembrance of allah just the bismillah on the door on the door he cannot open it imagine the heart which is filled with the love of allah imagine a heart which is filled with the remembrance of allah impossible he cannot do nothing he can do nothing also in hadith a muslim rasulullah says meaning of which is uh, when you um, uh, tie up your water skin because in those days uh, they didn't have tumblers uh, glasses or bottles like us right we do as we do today they had uh, kind of uh, leather uh, bags they would call it water skins right leather or other material so they would fill this with water and rasulullah said when you fill this with water and you and you tie it and you you close it and mention the name of allah and and the shayatin cannot uncover or undo this water skin and similarly he cannot uncover a closed vessel on which allah's name has been mentioned so all these practices we should follow we'll we'll look at all of this of course a later part of the workshop but just a couple of points which came to mind inshallah just to show you how 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 weak they are but they are given power like we said like we saw the example of the story of hasan al basri rahimullah about this man cutting the tree yeah they're given power over us because of our sins the more we commit sins the heart becomes more used to it uh, the remembrance of allah is gone and now shaitan takes its place and this is how they become powered over us and now we become weak we become weak now we become weak and we become tempted to follow whatever they ask us to follow also this hadith we, we talked about earlier in tirmidhi also it is there and how a shaitan fears some of his slaves and and runs away also we talked about uh, this the 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 life of sulaiman alayhis salam and how the shayateen were subjugated to sulaiman alayhis salam based on 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 the dua which he made to allah allah accepted this dua to give him a kingdom as unique as that nobody else no other prophet will have a kingdom like him so the shayateen were working for sulaiman alayhis salam all the shayateen they would dig and they would build uh, construction and so on and so forth to the extent that when sulaiman al islam passed away they had no idea they continued working for him and this is mentioned in the quran sulaiman al islam was leaning on a stick he had a stick he was leaning on this and he passed away leaning on it and they had no idea he was dead 
they thought he was still alive. They was they feared Suleiman al Islam, and they continued working for him until uh, you know termites or ants they ate through the stick. The stick became weak and it collapsed, and the body of Suleiman al Islam fell down. And the Shaitan said, Subhanallah, the, he was dead all this time. We never knew. So the, the point I'm trying to mention is that some people also uh, wrongly credit the Shaitan with ilm al ghaib that they have knowledge of the unseen. They know this and they know that and they know where a falan thing is hidden. Uh, we have all these cases, Yani. I, I, real life case, real life case. And we'll talk about many inshallah interesting real, real life cases in the last part, but this comes to mind now. Um, there, there's a family uh, and, and they have this person, a relative of theirs living back home. Um, so the family is here and, and the relative is living back home and the relative has connection with the jinn. So when this family um, misplaces anything, like they misplaced a necklace or something, I think, so they called up this relative and he checked with the jinn. The jinn told them where the necklace is. Subhanallah. So the point is we have become weak. We have become weak now. We are consulting the jinn to know where we have placed stuff. And this is a like a like what they call a catch-22 situation, uh, the chicken and the egg. It keeps on going back and back. You, go, you get deeper and deeper into it. To the extent that then finally, eventually, the Muslim is not able to climb out of this well. He drowns so deep, khalas, he cannot come out. All because of lack of tawheed and seeking things which Allah has prohibited us to do, like the magicians and the people with the jinn. Inshallah, we'll talk more about this, inshallah. Um, they cannot produce miracles. They cannot produce any miracles. It may seem like a miracle, but everything happens by the will of Allah. On their own, they cannot. And Surah Shura, Allah says, meaning it is not the shayateen who have brought this down. It is not the shayateen who brought down the Quran or the or, or uh, nazal in the Quran. Yes, this is important. <clears throat> because again, there are many misconceptions about this. They cannot appear in the form of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dreams. What do I mean by this? Rasulullah said in a hadith, meaning of which is that, if you see me in a dream, so he's telling the Sahaba, if you see me, it means if you see Rasulullah in a dream, you have actually seen me. Because shaitan cannot take my form in dreams. Baraklafikum. What does this mean? He's saying, if you see me in a dream, you have actually seen me. Because shaitan cannot take my form in a dream. So, if somebody sees, even today, for example, if somebody sees, I saw Rasulullah in my dream. Type. If he saw Rasulullah actually as how Rasulullah would, is, was, that's why it's important to have an idea of how Rasulullah uh, وسلم, looked, his, his, his uh, physical characteristics. Yeah. Uh, then he actually saw him. This is the first point. Second point, it happens in cases wherein a person says, I saw Rasulullah. But then the person he saw in the dream is, for example, short, is, for example, bald, is, for, is, for example, clean shaven. And we know all of this three doesn't apply to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is actually shaitan. Now this is shaitan coming to this person in his dream and telling him, I am Rasulullah. And do this and do that. Or from tomorrow you don't have to pray. Huh? Or from tomorrow you don't have to fast. Your salah is forgiven. Okay, Ajib, this is not possible because the Sharia is complete. Nobody can come today and claim there is no Salah for you from tomorrow. No, Laya Sheikh, it's complete. This itself is a warning sign to you that this person is not is not Rasulullah, but he's a Shaitan because uh, he's giving you things, he's giving you something which which cannot happen. And plus, be like we said, if you see him in a form uh, different from, because Shaitan can never take the form of Rasulullah in a dream. So if Shaitan comes in a dream claiming to be Rasulullah, for sure. The person you will see in the dream will not look like Rasulullah at all. You get the point? This is, this is another aspect because it is important. Many people claim, I saw Rasulullah and, I, and he I told me this and he told me that. Yeah, he told me to take your wealth away or to marry your daughter, whatever. Yeah, you know, you know. So these things uh, we, need, we need to keep in mind the hadith behind this that uh, if it if if you see somebody actually how Rasulullah looked, then now yes, you, maybe maybe you saw Inshallah Rasulullah, and that is glad tidings Inshallah. But if you saw somebody else, or rather if you saw a person who's short, bald, clean shaven, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever. Yeah, his his lower garment below the ankles, 
all this kind of stuff. Definitely, he's not Rasulullah. He's the Shaitan who claiming, who's claiming to be Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We talked about this already when we talked about the lowest heaven and all that. And also, this we mentioned just a while ago that they cannot open a door on which has been locked on which Allah's name has been mentioned. Paraklafikum. So these are practices we need to put in place. See, people claim sometimes, you know. Uh, that I do everything. I do my adhkar of the morning. I do the adhkar of the evening. I recite Quran. I pray salawat. And everything is in place. Yet I get, like, for example, bad dreams. Or, I, or there's possession. Or there are issues of magic. And so on and so forth. Why? Uh, Sheikh Al Fauzan, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, he gives a very good explanation for this. It's not that the adhkar is not worked. Or, or the, uh, the, the adhkar is, is, is not protecting you, no. Or your Quran recitation, whatever, no. But it, it's possible that in some cases, you're lacking, deficient in, in your concentration, in your focus. Uh, when you're making the adhkar, you don't, you don't concentrate on it, for example. Or when you're reciting the Quran, you don't pay attention, for example. These weaknesses are there sometimes in human beings. And Allah wills, if the qadr of Allah happens, this will happen exactly at that point. When you have this lapse, when you have this, uh, when your guard slips down, as they say, yeah, Baraklafika. So that was um, the complete life of the jinn. We looked at uh, a lot of points on that uh, area. And we want to move on to the next part of the agenda, which is uh, the enmity. Now, so now we're getting into the shayateen itself. So enmity, enmity between man and shaitan. Okay, and the reasons for this, the causes for this, the sources for this, the origins of this. And then we look at the effects of the jinn on they have on humankind and how, uh, what is Rukia and how Rukia can, can actually protect or, or heal somebody who, is, who has these effects and so on and so forth. Barakallahu alaikum. So, um, first and foremost, the command which Allah gave to Iblis to prostrate, rather to everybody, because they were angels also present. Surah Baqarah, Surah Araf, many places in the Quran, to prostrate to our father, Adam alayhi salam. Iblis rejected. Right? He rejected, as we know. Yeah? So Allah asked him, meaning of which is, what prevented you, Ya Iblis, that you did not prostrate when I commanded you? Iblis said, Ana khairu minhu, I am better than him. Khalaktani min nar, you created me fire. Wa khalaktahu min teen, and you created him from clay. This is the primary reason, the point at which enmity started. By the look of it, it is Iblis's fault. Obviously, we know this, right? A command was given. Iblis did not obey the command. Forget the reasons. These reasons are secondary. I am better than him. I am from fire. He's from... All this is secondary. The lesson we want to take from this, brothers and sisters, is that a command is given to you and me as well. Don't bring in reasons. Do not bring in reasons to have an excuse from doing the command. That we become like Iblis. How are we different from Iblis then? This is kibr. This is what is called arrogance. Barakallahu alaikum. If you get the point, very important point. Very important point. Do not bring in dunyavi reasons. Do not look at Islam through your worldly education, prism or lens. Uh, this is a big error and you will you will you yani uh, this is a problem islam is a revelation why and we look at it based on what rasulullah told us khala simple and easy as long as it is sahih we accept it do not try to twist it uh, look at it from this point and that way point you know my brain doesn't say this is okay it doesn't apply for this day and age laya sheik so Iblis did the same thing. He did the same thing. And that is why he was expelled from Jannah. As we know. He was expelled from Jannah. And then Allah said, get down from this, from paradise. Because they were in paradise. It is not for you to be arrogant here. Ah. So this ayat is clear evidence that this, what he said, was basically what arrogance, kibir. It's called kibir. So any one of us who says, no, I don't believe this hadith, which is sahih, for example, or I, I don't think uh, music is haram, you know, uh, music is perfectly okay. Today, everybody listens to it. People in Spain listen, listen to it. Lai, shaykh. <laughs> Subhanallah, yadi. Excuse me. We have brothers who tell me, uh, who tell, for example, 
Spain had music. When, when, when Spain was Muslim, they used to listen to music. Sufi music and this music. So what? <laughs> Is Spain our benchmark now? Since when did Spain become a prophet for us? Auzubillah. So what does Spain had music any? Sure any. Today you have even this part of the region, uh, all kinds of things happening. Does it make it right? No, yeah, Sheikh. We, we base our deen on, on, on the original sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. See, the, uh, uh, a basic rule I want you to take down, note it down if you wish, in your pads or in your hearts. You do not judge uh, the followers, sorry, you do not judge the deen by its followers, but rather you judge the followers by the deen. Let me repeat. You do not judge a deen you do not judge the deen of Islam by its followers, because followers can be wrong. You judge the followers by the deen. Barakallahu feekum. Taib. So, uh, this is an example, Yani. But the point is, this is arrogance. This is arrogance. When, when we give you the proof, when we tell you, Jazakallah khair, this hadith is making music haram. Oh, no, maybe this is wrong, maybe this is weak, and maybe this is um, Ravi forgot about it, uh, this and that nonsense, yani, subhanAllah. So this is the same thing. The, the, why are these ayat mentioned in the Quran? See, this happened historically way back. Why is Allah telling us all of this? We should ponder upon these ayat. So Allah told Iblis, meaning of which is get out for you out of those humiliated and disgraced. After this, these are actually basically sequential steps, if you want. So the first was the command. Uh, I should have, maybe I should have put uh, numbers instead of bullets. Anyway, the first was the command to prostrate to Adam and Islam, which which uh, was given by Allah, and 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 uh, Iblis um, refused. And when Allah asked him, he said, "I'm better than Adam and Islam." But in fact, he was not. Anyway, so the second step is what he was expelled from Al Jannah. It was a command to expel him from Jannah. Once this command was given to throw him out, Iblis sought revenge. Okay, there's a step before this which I missed, wherein Iblis tells, asks Allah for reprieve. He tells him, give me, uh, don't take me to account till the day of judgment. And Allah gives him this. Once he got this from Allah, and he, know, he knows Allah is the most truthful and, 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 and always, uh, you know, uh, once a command has been given, khalas. It will not change. So once he got this uh, reprieve and this um, uh, leave until the day of judgment, now he sought revenge. Surat Araf again, Iblis says, and it's a very good surah to go and read the tafsir of for you brothers and sisters, inshallah. Iblis said, now meaning of which is what? Because you have sent me astray, surely I will sit in wait against them on your straight path. Subhanallah. So now he's blaming Allah for making him astray. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah, and this is ajib. Yani. But the, what is even more ajib is today Muslims do the same thing. Today we Muslims, we do the same thing. We have an issue with Qadr. It's not the topic, but we have an issue with Qadr. And we say, oh, if Allah did not want this, it would not have happened. If Allah did not want me to, want me to commit zina, I would not have committed zina. If Allah did not want me to work in a bank, I would not have worked in a bank. A'udhu billah. The same thing. So now Iblis is blaming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you have sent me astray, I will sit and wait against them on a straight path. So he, he thinks, and also he thinks it's because of Adam al-Islam that this punishment is happening to him. That he is being disgraced, humiliated, and going to be put in hellfire. He is blaming Adam al-Islam instead of blaming himself. And then he says, then I will come to them from before them and behind them, from their right and from their left. And you will not find most of them as thankful ones. So, subhanallah. So this ayat also tells us that he's going to attack us from every side, every side, from top, from bottom, from the right and from the left, from front and from the back. But all he can do is attack. He cannot force us to do anything. He doesn't have this power. Except, of course, the position is something else. We'll talk about this as an exception. But generally speaking. And he says, Iblis says this, you will not find most of them as thankful ones. 
So the aksariyat of the humans, of the Muslims, Iblis says, will be deviated, will fall, will fall prey to him, will fall uh, trapped to his, his, his uh, waswasa and attacks, except a few. And there are various ayat, uh, if you want to note it down again, Surah Araf and other Surah Nisa and so on and so forth, where Allah has warned us against the shayateen. And one of the classical, uh, the best ayat, which I like always in Surah Baqarah, uh, Allah says, Audhu billahi minashaitan al-rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Tukhulu fis silmi ka'afa, Wa la tattabiyu khutawati shaitan, Innahu lakum aduhum mubihim. Oh, those who have believed, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Verily to you, he is an accursed and open enemy. <clears throat> Another warning which Allah has given us, very important in the present day situation and scenario, is the fact in Surah Araf, uh, Allah says, meaning of which is, O children of Adam al-Islam, we have bestowed raiment upon you to cover yourself. You know, like like dresses and outfits and clothes, yeah, to cover yourself, and as an adornment and the raiment of righteousness, that is better. Also, in the next ayat, I think I have it here. Yes, O children of Adam al-Islam, Allah says, "Let not Shaitan deceive you, as he got your parents out of paradise, stripping them of their raiments to show them their private parts. Verily, he and his kabilu who." see you from where you cannot see them. Verily, he made the shayateen awliya for those who believe not. Allahu Akbar. What do we learn from these two? First of all, brothers and sisters, Allah is saying in, in ayat number 26 that Allah has given us this risk, this provision of outfits, clothes, uh, jilbab, himar, whatever, to cover ourselves. And then Allah warns us, the next ayat, he warns us, don't let shaitan deceive you. As he deceived your parents, Adam and Hawa, how did shaitan come to them? Did shaitan go to Adam -Islam and, and his wife Hawa -Islam, huh, and tell them, oh Adam, go and eat from the tree, which Allah has prohibited you to eat from. Did he do that? He knows for sure, wallahi, he knows for sure that if he had said that, Adam -Islam would never have listened to him. He would never have eaten from the tree. Never. Did he do that? What did he do? He said, shall, shall, shall I show you a, 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 a thing which will give you everlasting kingdom? Something which will never perish. He tricked him this way. And once they ate from the tree, what happened? Their private parts were exposed. And then they started covering it up with the leaves from Jannah. So what I'm, why am I telling you this? As shaitan exposed the privates of our parents, he's trying to do the same thing with you and me. And he's succeeding. Subhanallah. How many of us go out half naked, scantily clad, disobeying the commandments of the hijab? Both the men and the women. I'm not referring only to the sisters. Even the brothers have hijab commandments for them. Maybe they don't know as it. Subhanallah. That's their peril, Yani. You should know. The ayat of the hijab in Surah Noor, ayat number 30 is, is for the men. And ayat number 31 is for the sisters. So first for the Muslim brothers to lower your gaze, this part of the hijab, to wear outfits which are loose and, and free-flowing, not tight pants which show the shape of your private parts. See, when we say we cover up, it doesn't mean uh, just wearing an outfit. It should not expose the contours or the figures of your shape. This is detrimental. This is opposite to the hijab. One of the conditions of the hijab is that it should be uh, loose, roomy, and free, and, and, and easy to, uh, yani, not uh, clinging to your body for both brothers and sisters. So uh, if a brother wears a pant, for example, a tight pant, you know, I don't know, uh, if you use your nail and just touch it, it will split apart. Subhanallah. And we see brothers doing this today. Had a mushkil. Or going around bare chested. Because we know for the, for the men, the, the hijab, the, the covering, uh, bare minimum covering is from the navel and up to the knee. 
So you, you see uh, brothers wearing uh, shorts which are above the knees, for example. Huh? Shaitan, this is from Shaitan. He's doing the same thing which he did to our parents. And likewise for the sisters, they put a handkerchief on their hair and say, I'm doing my hijab. No, it's not hijab. Or they wear a nice abaya, but they're perfumed, fully perfumed. See, the hijab is a barrier. The literal meaning, it means a barrier. The literal meaning in Arabic language, it's a barrier. It's a wall between you and the non-Maharam people. So when you wear a, a proper uh, uh, jilbab and kimar, for example, but then perfume yourself completely, or wear trinklets and, 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 and what do you call these um, jewelry, which make a noise when you walk, or high heels, which go tuck, 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 tuck when you walk. Where is the barrier? People will turn around and look at you. The barrier is gone. They're looking at you now. You should be inconspicuous. You should gel with, with, with people. Should not, you should not attract attention. That's the purpose of the hijab. So the same uh, way which shaitan tricked our parents, he's doing the same thing with you and me. And most of us are falling trapped to this. He's stripping us from our raiments and our garments. Surah Fatir, Allah says meaning of which is, and even though this is running into like three or four slides, it's just sampling. There are many more ayat in the Quran which are talking about this topic. Allah says, meaning of surely shaitan is an enemy to you. So take him as an enemy. He only invites his followers, his, that they may come, become dwellers of the fire. See, we have only two parties, brothers and sisters. Only two parties. Hizb shaitan and Hizb Allah. Not the Hizb Allah in Lebanon. This is Hizb shaitan, but they call themselves Hizb Allah. But this is Hizb shaitan. Uh, so don't get me confused with that. Uh, don't think I'm referring to that. Uh, this basically follows the true followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Um, he invites you so that you become dwellers of the fire. See, for, for Shaitan, he's sure, he's sure he's going to the hellfire. This is a promise of Allah given to him when he uh, disobeyed to prostrate. So he wants to take, because he thinks it is because of Adam al Islam that he's going to, into hellfire. So he wants to take the maximum of the children of Adam al Islam with him into hellfire. That's his primary objective. We'll stop with this slide. Uh, and inshallah we'll continue in the next weekend inshallah see we know iblis is a disbeliever right we know iblis is a disbeliever wada it's wada but what made him a disbeliever is, is it was it his refusal to prostrate because refusing to prostrate to adam al islam was a sin it was not disbelief adam al islam also ate from the forbidden tree adam al islam also ate from a tree which allah prohibited that is also a sin so this makes them equal now if you consider that you know uh, that refusing to prostrate was a sin, and eating from from uh, the prohibited tree was a sin, both of them committed sin. So what makes iblis different from Adam al Islam? Because sinning does not put one one person outside uh, disbelief, yani in a state of disbelief, unless the sin is 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 uh, you know, uh, for example. Uh, in, in, in to that extent of disbelief, right? But what we want to talk about is what, what is the point which made Iblis different from Adam al Islam? Was the fact that when, when he said, Ana minhu, min nar wa min teen. Yeah? And the fact that he believed that what Allah is saying to him is wrong. And that Allah made Audubillah an error huh, by asking him to prostrate to Adam al Islam. And Audubillah, Allah made an error by favoring Adam al Islam over him. So now he is telling Allah was wrong. Billah. This was the issue. This was the issue. I hope it's clear. This was the issue. The arrogance of it. Adam al Islam by eating from the tree was not being arrogant. He was committing a sin. Allah asked him to go right. He went left. This is a sin. He didn't say, Billah, Allah, why did you ask me to go right? Or how can you ask me to go right? Billah, Allah. This is now his arrogance. This is disbelief. Because if you believe, if somebody believes that Allah, what he's saying is something's wrong. Allah wants us to pray five times a day. This is wrong. Allah shouldn't ask us to pray Fajr. This is disbelief, khalas. This is kufr. You see the difference? So it's not the fact that he did, he did not prostrate. No. The fact which made him a disbeliever and, and, and a cursed enemy of, 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 you, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, 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 and in hellfire forever was arrogance, kibr, and the fact that he thought 
he knows better than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ah the fact that he thought that he knows better than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how many of us think likewise today again the same example when a hadith is given to you a sahih hadith given is given to a muslim he says no 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 this is not correct it could be wrong and this is this and this is that and i don't think this is right i don't think this was right the way it should be i don't think allah should have said a'udhu billah now this is things which are bordering on kufr brothers and sisters barakallahu feekum taib so i think we'll stop for this uh, for today inshallah yeah We'll, we'll stop for this for today and uh, we'll see if you have any questions on the chat box or on you can also raise your hands if you wish Taib, assalamu alaikum shaykh wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh one question today's session it was mentioned that raki communicates with the jinn so who are the jinn able to understand our language is uh Taib, brother this is coming inshallah we're going to do this in the next two sec- sec- uh, parts of the agenda on how the Raqi communicates with the jinn who is possessing a human being. Uh, if you're going to attend, inshallah, next weekend, it will be there. If you're going to attend, let me know. Otherwise, I'll give you a short answer. But if you attend, inshallah, it's good because we'll have a long answer, inshallah. So I want to hold on hold on to this because uh, the flow is there. It will come with the flow. Uh, and I don't want to confuse the other brothers and sisters. So if you're going to attend, let me know. Otherwise, I will give you a short answer. Taib, one more question. Suleiman alayhi salam controlled jinn with Allah's help. I was wondering why we can't make use of jinn strength to use in today's time against strong kufar nations who are maligning Muslims with their lies. So why we can't use the jinn to expose the lies of these nations? Type okay. The brother's question is, uh, Sulaiman al-Islam, we said, control jinn with the help of Allah, right? So he's saying, uh, I wonder why we cannot do the same today and control jinn and against the kufar na- and use them against the kufar nations type two things brothers uh, in this question this answer to this question first and foremost sulaiman al-islam made a dua he made a dua oh allah give me a kingdom which is unique unique is what not nobody else can have this halas is unique unique that no other prophet no other people no other peoples of other prophets have this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua and he gave him this unique miracle that he was able to control the jinn for his uh, actions and activities and duties. Since this is unique, it doesn't apply to us. So even, even if you make the dua today, this will not be accepted, it will not be answered because already Sulaiman al-Islam's dua is already accepted. It's a unique kingdom which he had. So we cannot do this. Type The second part of this uh, answer and again, we'll discuss more on this when you talk about magicians. The magicians, they claim to control the jinn. Okay? And they claim to do things with the help of the jinn. But the error there is that it's not really control. It's a contract. There is a difference. It's not control. It's a contract. We cannot control the jinn. If somebody comes to you and says, okay, I'll help you with this. I control the jinn. I'll use them to help you with this. He's a magician. Stay away from him. Stay away from him. So they have a contract. A contract is different from control. Contract is an agreement. So when you have a, a business partner and you have a contract with the two of you, you don't control the partner, right? It's a contract, right? So it's a contract. So uh, we'll talk more about it in detail. I don't want to jump the gun and give you too much information, which may confuse some people. So uh, let's do it step by step, inshallah. It's, it's coming, inshallah. But just briefly, this is not possible today. And uh, nobody c- can control the jinn. Yes, there are contracts with the jinn do with the magicians. So the, when, in the contract, what happens? The jinn help the magician, and the magician also help the jinn. How and what? We'll talk about this, inshallah. It's coming, inshallah. Barakla fikum. Taib. So let me know if you're going to attend next weekend uh, and your first question will be answered, inshallah. Barakla fikum. Any other questions? I don't see any hands raised. So I think we are good. Um, yes. Um, brothers, I posted on the Telegram group, uh, Le- Islam for us lectures group, if you're part of it. I posted the student notes. Uh, student uh, notes which are useful information of what we are covering in fact i put more information in the book than what i'm covering so it's be useful you can download it if you cannot uh, download uh, you having a difficulty or you cannot access or you don't have telegram i wish you do hopefully inshallah but if you do not have send me an email uh, that's my email on, on the chat box send me an email i will send you the students notes book it's a pdf document i will send it to you by email so send me an email but the best thing would be to join um this uh one minute islam for us 
just typing it out here. The best thing would be to use Telegram and join this uh, group. It's a public group because there's more information there. I also do other lectures on, on Fiqh and Sira, which you can listen to, inshallah, beneficial. Um, uh, but if you don't have and you don't want to uh, download Telegram, it's your right, alhamdulillah, no problem. But send me an email, uh, navid6998 at hotmail.com. Inshallah, I will reply to you with the student's uh, guide or student's note. Notes. Barakla fikum. Taib. Jazak Malak Aaron. I think we are done for today. Uh, we'll meet again. And the brother who asked me the question, brother Samir, uh, just note 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 the question down. Keep it in your scratch pad or notepad. If I don't talk about it, please remind me again. Jazak Malak Aaron. Uh, until next weekend, then so, uh, next weekend again at the same timings. Yomul Juma will be three thirty. I'm not sure. Is this time okay for you, brothers? Because I saw only twelve brothers today, which is a bit disappointing alhamdulillah but um i don't know is the time okay for you can you let me know in the chat box or you can unmute the mic and let me know is this time okay or do you prefer 3 30 itself uh, saudi time because i thought uh, last last sub people were less so i thought 7 30 is better for you i'm not sure so let me know which works for you better um, because i want more of us to attend inshallah but there's hardly anybody attending so anyway alhamdulillah. Yeah. yes brother Assalamualaikum. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Okay. Is eight o'clock everybody? Is everybody is okay with eight o'clock? Uh, eight p.m. Yani. Someone says three thirty is still good, but uh, okay. Let's see. Inshallah. This time is okay. This time is okay. Or oh, the other option I have, brothers. I don't know if it works for you. Is after Fajr in the morning. Um, around let's say 6 a.m. Saudi time, is that okay for you? I don't know. 6 a.m. Saudi time, I don't know. I don't, maybe not for most of them. Taib, uh, okay, let's see how it goes. Inshallah, let me, I'll make up a mind and uh, either we do it at 3 30 or 8 o'clock or 7 30 or 8 o'clock. Let's see, inshallah, I'll put the invitation. Uh, what about 3.15 on Juma? Yes, one of the brothers, uh, I think he's currently taken from Kuwait, Kuwait. He told me he wants 3.15 on Juma. Um, I have a class in the morning. Okay. So we'll, we'll stick to the afternoon time or, or evening time. I will let you know on, on, on Telegram, inshallah. I think, brother, uh, the one from Kuwait, 3.30 is still better because... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just um, uh, We'll try to finish earlier if that's good for you. We'll try to wrap up a bit earlier on Yom Juma. And uh, Sabt, we'll see, inshallah. I'll, I'll let you know on, on Telegram, inshallah. I'll send it on the Islam for Us lectures group. Again, email me, inshallah, or, or, or access the group and download your student notes. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Wa akhirat dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.